The podcast you're about to listen to, Focused on Forward, was created on Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. First off, it's free. Free is always amazing. Secondly, there's a creation tool that's going to allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone, tablet, or computer. Anchor is going to take that podcast and going to distribute it for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and so many other platforms. And you get to make money from your podcast right away with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one convenient place. So how do you find it and use it? Well, go to your app store, download the free Anchor app, or go to anchor.fm to get started. You too can make a podcast. You can do it with Anchor. Welcome to Focused on Forward. The purpose of this podcast is to focus on recovery from life situations. Be it a disease, chronic or acute, perhaps the loss of someone so dear to you in death, or a change of life patterns that has affected you so profoundly that you have no choice but to find your new normal and become focused on moving forward. Each episode is designed to show the positivity that people bring to each and every one of their stories, the successes they've had, ways that they have become so definitively focused on moving forward. We look forward to sharing their stories, and we hope that they inspire you just as much as they have inspired us. Thanks for listening, and enjoy the show. Hello, and welcome to Focused on Forward. We have a very special guest today. Uh, She has a wonderful story, an important story of reinvention, building towards self-awareness, and really her journey is something that we can all pay attention to. Uh, Because we all need to focus on what we do to be moving forward, to be focused on forward. So we're very excited to have Unika with us here today. Thank you for being our guest today, Unika. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Oh, absolutely. Very excited to have you on today. So what I'd like to do is is I know that I'm, uh, I know a little bit about your story. Uh, We've talked a little bit. But I know that my guests also are excited to hear uh, your story in detail. And so whenever you're ready, please include us. Well, my name is Unika. I'm an author and a public speaker, but I didn't um, just turn out that way. And I didn't always know what my journey was. I grew up in foster care um, due to abuse, child abuse from my stepmother. Um, I grew up in foster care and um, I kind of, grew up faster than what the average teenage girl would grow up. Um, I was always interested in reading and writing in school, so I always excelled um, in those two subjects, and I kind of took that with me as I was an adult. And when I got to my 12th grade year in high school, I really couldn't afford to be in school because there are so many fees that come with being a senior, such as the ACT, the SAT, there's the prom, the senior dues, the cap and gown. And those are things that I couldn't afford. So I dropped out of school and I started dancing in the strip club. And I did that for nine years. And I didn't do it for nine years consecutively. Um, I did take a break when I had my son. And I started dancing at 17 and when I stopped and took the break um, during my pregnancy it was like a year and a half long break and I saw myself my first reinvention was when I became a mother and I was going to job corps um, and I got my GED and my medical assistant um, certification while I was there and um, I got hooked up back with some old friends that were dancing in the club and at first it started out as a i'm going to dance on the weekends and then i'm just going to work on the weekday and it ended up being me being late for work because i was at the club during the weekdays and i eventually lost my job so that was another rock bottom moment because i was already separated um, from my biological mother at the age of two, then going into foster care at the age of 11, and then dropping out and trying to get myself back together after having my son. But 
um, influences had other ways for me. And I was caught up in, it wasn't the fact that the medical assistant wasn't a good job. It was just the fact that from 17 to 24, when I had my son, all I knew was dancing and I was used to that money and used to getting money that same day that I worked. And also being out of the club for a little while, I hadn't um, went out or had any fun. So I got caught back up into that life. And at first it was fun to me because I was working it and dancing. But once it got down to being my only source of income and I didn't want to go in there, but I had to because I had to pay for my bills, that's when um, reality set in. And the money wasn't bad at all, but it just gets to a point where it isn't worth everything else that you're losing in return. So I decided to stop dancing. And when I decided, I didn't tell anybody that I was going to quit. Um, I just looked for jobs in the daytime and I needed guidance. And it was something inside of me that was really bothering me. Like, what am I doing? I'm supposed to be doing more. So I drew back to what I always liked to do when I was younger, which was read. And when I was younger, I used to read the Cheetah Girl series, Little Bill, the Bernstein Bears. Um, but as I got older, I shifted to nonfiction and self-help because of the fact that I didn't have parents to tell me you know, to do the right thing. I didn't have anyone to go to for advice. I didn't have any of that. So the books that I read, those were my parents. Those were my guidance counselors. Those are my, psych my psychologists. And I used those books and I lived by them and I still live by them to this day. And when I drew back to reading, I went back to my favorite book. Well, I have two favorite books. One of my favorite books, which is um, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill and when you read the title you'll think that it's something that would it's just a get rich quick book or something but it's definitely more than that and I put that book in my dance bag every night and I would read it if the club was slow and it wasn't a lot of people or if I got done with my makeup early I would read and that book went so in depth on your mind and really the book is all about influencing your subconscious mind so that's what I did to elevate myself and get out and I also read Robert Greene the 48 laws of power I read um, Dale Carnegie's books how to win friends and influence people and um, his public speaking book um, I read a lot of self-help authors Dave Ramsey Ayala Van Zandt and all of the things that they put in those books are the things that I did. So once I stopped dancing, um, I had found a job at a call center for a security company. And I was doing that. And I remember me not really knowing, you know, what I wanted to do. I didn't, I didn't quit dancing and say, I'm going to be an author. I'm going to be a speaker. I didn't do that. I just knew that where I was, wasn't where I wanted to be and I knew that I had to be doing something better if I wanted my life to make a turn for the better so once I started working at that um, call center people noticed that I wasn't in the club and that I wasn't out on the scene so a lot of people asked me you know what did I do what they used to call me and ask me like how did you do that you just stopped dancing and we just seen you in the club all the time and and I just really had got tired of it and I wanted other people to have the same experience that I had of self-reinvention. And I wanted everyone to know, you know, what I did. A lot of times when you see successful people, it, for some reason, it's some people that have a mind state of, you know, I don't want to tell, you know, I don't want to tell what I did because it might if someone else sees it, it might cut in on my success. But I never had that type of mind state. I have an abundant mind state and I feel like every everything will come, everything that's meant for me will be for me. So that's why I share, you know, what I did. 
So I started writing the glow up and I didn't actually know what it was going to be called. I was just basically going through my journals because I journaled everything um, while I was changing. And so I went back through my journals and I just looked at everything that I had done and everything that I had wrote to myself every night when I was coming from the club and when I was waking up trying to change. And I put that um, in a book and I didn't know um, what it was going to be called yet, but I named it the glow up because I grew up and I had a different, a different type of aura about me. And the glow up is basically the foundation to self reinvention or the foundation to how I reinvented myself. Um, personal growth is a very long journey. It's a lifelong journey because you will always be called to elevate. Um, but the glow up, I feel, will set the foundation and it will put you in alignment of where you need to be. Um, I included a self-analysis. Um, a lot of people told me they didn't know what they wanted to do. When I asked them, you know, you want to change, well, what do you want to do? And they said they don't know. So I have a self-analysis that basically you answer these questions honestly and truly about yourself. And with analyzing yourself, you can see, you know, hey, I kind of like this or, hey, I'm kind of good at that. And you can also um, critique some things. I have a question of, do you fear criticism? Um, a lot of people don't follow their dreams because of what they feel like other people might say. So the self-analysis um, kind of puts you in perspective and gets you aligned. Um, I shared um, some tips on how I set goals or how I come up with my creative process. So the glow up to me um, is the foundations of self-reinvention and it's a gift that I wanted to give to everyone, especially the people that have been in the same predicaments as, as me. Okay. So yeah, you've got a, a pretty interesting story that kind of weaves around some timelines here. So looking at this, um, now just to jump back, uh, you said that the book by Napoleon Hill, that was your, your favorite, correct? Yes, it was. Okay. That and um, Robert Greene, those two are tied up at the top, my favorite. Okay, so those are, that's number one and, and one and one A, we'll say. Robert Greene, <laughs> yes. Napoleon Hill. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what was the the moment where you looked at at things because you know for a lot of people when it comes to reinvention when it comes to changing who and what they are uh that moment when they realize that they uh, you know and to plug my own show name again to become focused on forward when they realize that that's what they've got to do there's there's what we call the light bulb moment what was your light bulb moment where you said i need to do something different than what i'm doing right here right now well, as I was reading those books and reflecting on myself, um, I can really honestly, truly say I got tired. And it wasn't even just the fact that I got tired of dancing. I got tired of losing in life. Um, I just reevaluated myself. And when I looked at my timeline of my life, I was always losing. I was separated from my mom at the age of two. And then I was abused by my stepmother and got put in foster care at the age of 11. Then I couldn't finish school because I couldn't afford it at the age of 17. I had to start dancing. And then getting a job and getting back into the club at the age of 24 after I stopped dancing for a year and a half. So there, the light bulb moment was my self-reflection on this couldn't be it. I look back at my life and I had been through so many traumatic things and it was something, I guess, a, a other self, you could say, my other self was talking to me and saying, this is not your life. And then I was looking around just in my environment of where I was and a lot of girls, of course, everyone starts dancing and keeps dancing for their own reasons. But I just noticed that it was a lot of things changing in the industry, such as, you know, women getting older, but they're still there. And um, people, you know, enhancing and doing things to their bodies to look a certain way. And 
as I looked around, I know a lot of people say they changed because of, oh, I changed because I wanted to be like this. My change was because I saw things that I did not want to be like. And that was the light bulb moment. Number one, I got tired of being the loser in life. And I got tired of being on the other end of the stick. Um, and then there was me looking around and seeing what my future could be if I remained stagnant if I stayed in the club, if I kept hanging out every night, if I kept being in a club at night, sleeping through the day, not looking for a job, not doing anything productive, I saw my future and I saw what I didn't want to be. So that was my light bulb moment. And of course, at the time, I I didn't have the means to just up and stop dancing, which is why I read, I said, if I can't, you know, control me going to the club, at least I can bring a piece of what I know is good for me in the club. So that's why I bought my book in the club because I wasn't in a financial situation then to just quit. But I also wasn't going to give up all of the work that I did in the daytime and just let it leave me um, in the nighttime. And that really was the moment. Um, I can't even explain the feeling that I had but it was just something that just kept saying, this isn't it. And I remember looking at myself in the mirror of the dressing room and I was just shaking my head like, this is not it. This is just not it. And that was, you know, my light bulb moment. Okay. Yeah. So um, definitely having to, to reflect on yourself. And I think it's impressive, really. I, I think because sometimes when people are in, uh, what they may feel is to be desperate situations. They know there's a change that needs to be made. Um, I think many people have a sense of helplessness. And I think it's impressive that you, uh, I'm not saying that you didn't feel helpless at times, or maybe you worried about that at times. But I'm what I'm most impressed with, Unika, is that uh, in that moment, you decided to better yourself. And you decided to do that through self-education, through the books that you're reading, the self-help and wellness books and, and, and all those things. Um, so, you know, kudos to you for looking to those to, to help you and guide you instead of, you know, looking back to some other sources that may not have helped you elevate yourself uh, to the extent that you wanted. Yeah. Um, but let's, let's talk about your book for a moment. Um, your book is called The Glow Up. Now, where can people find The Glow Up? The Glow Up is available on my website, missunika.com, M-S-U-N-I-Q-U-E-K-A.com. It's available on walmart.com with two-day free shipping, and it's also available on eBay. So it's three places that you can get it. Um, The audio book, I mean, not the audio book, the... um, ebook the electronic book is available on my website and also on payhip if anybody is familiar with that website okay and we'll include a link to your personal website uh, when we post this episode so that uh, anyone who's interested in reading about your story has an opportunity to do so uh, directly from that link and uh, having gone and visited the website myself uh, I I think it's nice how you give a little bit of a preview uh, on the 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 introduction page there of who you are, what you are, um, and, and really, uh, you know, how you got to where you're at. So, okay. And uh, the, so why did we call it the glow up? What was the the intent there? Um, you said you did in writing the book, you weren't sure why, or, or you weren't sure what the title was going to be rather, not why it was going to be that, but so why did you land on the glow up? What was the the impetus there? I felt like, um, to me, glowing is shining. Um, To me, glowing is a ray of light. And I feel like when you reinvent yourself and when you change, you have a different light and you have a different shimmer about yourself. You You just have a different aura. And that's why I called it the glow up because of course we're elevating and we're evolving. And that's what the glow up is all about. Um, It's about stepping out of 
your old self and stepping out of your old ways and actually realizing that you need to elevate and you need to change. Um, so when you glow up, I feel like when someone glows up or when someone elevates, they just have a certain aura about them. They just have a certain glow and a certain um, radiance all around them. And I feel like elevation does that. When you know that you're moving up, it does that. And I also um, called it the glow up because every time you elevate, I feel like that would call for you to be another person. So when I say that self-reinvention is a lifelong journey and the glow up is like the foundation, um, I always say that don't just read the glow up one time and think that that's it. You know, I, mean, I just read it one time and then I'm done. Because once you set a goal for yourself, when you set that goal and you achieve it, you're going to have to level up again. You're going to have to glow up again. You're going to have to evolve again because you're going to make bigger goals for yourself. So glow is, to me, a shine, um, a radiance that you just see in, within somebody that is elevating. And it's not a glow that's really on the outside. It's a glow that comes from within, from you being just a stronger in, individual, intellectually, career-wise, and just all around in your life. Excellent. Okay. So thinking about the some of the things that we talked about with your know, as you were describing the book as you were describing some of the the foundational pieces i thought it was interesting that you talked about there was the uh the the self questionnaire um yeah. where you have to answer some of the questions so why is it so why is it that going to be difficult for some people because i i look at that and i think Okay, so it's one thing to ask yourself the question. It's another thing to answer it. So why is that going to be difficult for some other than others? Some people don't like to admit certain things or certain faults about their self. Um, me in particular, I can say I used to say that I didn't care about what people thought about me or what people say, but I really did. So those questions of, do you fear criticism? Your ego and your your friends might want to, I don't care what anybody says, but then when you think about it, why haven't you took the step then if you don't fear criticism? Why haven't you, you know, done what you need to do? Um, there's also questions in here about, I'm going to the self-analysis. Um, there's also questions in here about have you, um, are my actions strategic or do I just go with the flow? So there are a lot of people that are just going along with life. They don't plan anything. Um, a lot of people don't like to admit that. I think the self-analysis is so important because it's like a mirror. And the only way it will work is if you tell yourself the truth. And that's why I feel like, that's why I put that in the first chapter because so many people said they didn't know who, they didn't know, you know, what they wanted to do. They didn't know what they were good at. They don't know, you know, what's holding them back. So the self-analysis kind of shows you your weaknesses, your strengths, what you can work on. Um, have you been holding your end of the bargain when it comes to this? Do you hold yourself, yourself accountable when it comes to this? So that's why the self-analysis, I feel like, is a little bit harder or trickier for people because you really have to look at yourself in the mirror and, you know, tell the truth and, come to terms with what is really stopping you from elevating and glowing up. Okay, very good. So along with that, um, so you, you have the self-analysis. And so um, that to me sounds like that's where the, your foundation of your, your story comes is that you had to, to do that very same thing. So you're, you're helping people to go through, it sounds to me like the same process that you took yourself through, would that be correct? That's correct. Because like I stated, a lot of people don't like, they don't, they won't tell themselves the truth. And with me doing my self-analysis, I had to be honest with myself and say, Unika, you are the reason why you are here. You are the one that had a job as a medical assistant and went back to the club. You did that. So that's why I feel like 
that is an important step because that was a hard thing for me. I had to hold myself accountable and say, you know, yeah, you're fed up with dancing. Yeah, you're tired of going there every day, but Unika, it is you that chose that. So that's why I feel like the self-analysis is the first um, step because you have to be, in order for you to be true to your calling or true to your purpose, true to your gift, you first have to be true to yourself. And that's what the self-analysis is all about. Okay, excellent. So do you have any other um, books or things that you have in the works, that you, things that go along with this, like is a follow-up book coming? Or, or are you just kind of taking one step at the time right now and, and working on, on who Unika is? There is a follow-up book coming. Um, I am writing a book about you know, my life, because I think that it's important for people to understand why I am so passionate about um, evolving and personal growth and self-reinvention, because I started from a few humble beginnings. Um, I'll also be um, doing some things for authors. Right now, I have a free online course which is called self-made and self-published and as i told you before i like to help people i really do i like to share what i know um just like with the glow up i'm sharing what i did to change so with the um self-made and self-published it's for authors writers freelancers even bloggers um that want to write a book and they're scared of you know getting turned down by publishers or um writing a synopsis for your book or you know what platform to sell your book on so i made that course and it's a completely free course um it's called self-made and self-published and um, i will give you the link to that so you can um have it for your listeners as well but it's um it's on thinkific.com and um it's basically what I did. Um, I always like to help people and tell people what I did because that's what I know works. Um, so I'm basically giving the steps that I did to um, write my book and my creative process and self-publishing. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll happily share that link as well when we publish uh, this episode. So that'd be great. Uh, I'm sure that uh, many people will be able to find, find use for that. So it's exciting to hear that uh, for us, always when we when we hear stories of of self improvement, you know, because many times the, the the people that we talk to on this on this podcast are are people who have gone through these uh, tremendous physical uh, things that they've had to go through. There's you know you know mental emotional things, you know, but there's also self help and self awareness that has to come along with being focused on forward. There has to be times where we, we look at ourselves and we reinvent ourselves because that's all part of a, a forward moving progress. And I think your story is phenomenal. So I think if you're going to write a story about, um, about you, you're going to, you know, uh, sounds like it's going to be an autobiography style. Would that be correct? Um, well, I'm trying to think of how I'm going to do it. I don't know if I want to do it as a, a novel based, loosely based on true events or if I want to do it as an autobiography. Um, I have to be careful because of the um, traumatic events that I went through. Um, I don't want, you know, anyone feeling any type of way, um, but I do want to speak my truth. So I'm in between whether it will be an autobiography or a novel, but I will let you, I will tell you that there will be different series. So um whichever one I choose to make it, it will be in different series. So you'll have a lot to learn about me, my family, and my process of growth. Okay. Yeah. Either way, I think you have an opportunity here for um, not only to talk about you, but I think stories such as yours where people have such growth um, are really inspiring. And it gives people uh, something to look at to say, Almost, a, it's almost a situation where they can look at you and say, well, if she can do it, I can do it. She did it. Right. And that's why I share everything. That's why I like to share stuff with people because I, 
I look at people, I used to look at people like, I know if she did it, I can do it, you know, but those people that I was looking up to, they weren't there to, you know, tell me exactly what they did. So I tried to um, give people something that I didn't have. Um, I didn't have, you know, someone that would be a motivational speaker to me or someone to tell me what they did to change. I really had to go through trial and error. And I really had to go to bookstores and get lots of books to learn, you know, what I wanted to learn. Another thing that I ask all my, all my guests, and I, I preface it pretty much the same way every time, not to summarize your whole experience down to one sentence, but looking back over your life, what is the one shining star, the one piece of advice that you would like to share with everybody that has meant the most to you or that you've learned the most from your experience? I would like to tell everyone to start right now where you are. Okay. Can you explain a little more what you mean by that? Yes. Um, a lot of times people stop their goals or they don't start something because they're waiting for this perfect time or people want to have everything all together. And life is so unpredictable that you literally will never have everything all together. Even if you think you have everything all together, it's one thing that you probably forgot. So what I like to tell people is don't wait. Um, when I started my journey as an author, um, I didn't wait until I knew if somebody was going to publish me. I didn't even wait until I had a laptop. I just looked through my journals and saw like, this is a lot of stuff in here. And I just organized it on notebook paper until I got a laptop. So I would like to tell people, don't, don't try to have everything together. And a reason why people try to have everything together is that fear of criticism, or I have to put this out and it has to be perfect, or somebody's going to think this or no. Um, I would tell everybody to start where you are. If you don't have the money to get a business license, at least figure out what you want your business name to be and make sure that it's not taken. Um, if you don't have the money to go get um, physical copies of your book, find a way to put it on a website or make an ebook at no cost to you. So um, I would tell everyone to start where they are and to start right now. Um, that was very important for me because I didn't wait until I didn't wait for things to work out for me to start looking for a job when I was dancing. I literally decided I want to stop dancing. I'm going to get out of the club. And that next morning, I started looking for a job. Um, and I feel like a lot of people, if if people stop waiting on the right time, and stop waiting for the all the ducks to be lined up in a row. I feel like there will be more creators out here in the world because there's so many people sitting on their ideas waiting for perfect timing. Yeah, I agree. I think uh I think if you wait for the moment, the moment passes you by. So Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, very good. Uh so all right, so it's uh uh the website is Again, is you is it unica.com or is it missunica.com? It's missunica.com M S. Okay. Oh, go ahead. Go please go ahead with it. M S U N I Q U E K A dot com. Very good. And like I said, that website will be posted along with the uh, uh, the uh, self made and self published. Those will be both published uh, when we when we put this uh, episode of the podcast out. Uh, those will be included in the link so people can go find those and go find your book. I encourage everyone to take a look at it. This book has seems to have a lot of good information for us, things that can help us. Uh, even if you're you're looking at making improvements to yourself with uh, uh, overcoming illness, injury, whatever it may be, I'm sure you can find some good information in here. So, Unika, thank you so much for being a guest on Focused on Forward today. Uh, we have yeah. certainly appreciated your advice and your experience. Thank you. Okay, guys, I think that concludes it. And that'll be it for Focused on Forward today. Have a good one. Well, that concludes another episode of Focused on Forward. 
To be a guest of Focused on Forward, you can reach us through Twitter at Podcast FOF, through our Facebook page named Focused on Forward, or through email focusedonforward at gmail.com. We look forward to hearing each and every one of your stories that has yet to be told. So until then, be safe, be kind, and be loving to one another as you stay focused on forward.